Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of A12 Modding in Depth with your host Rongo the Bold. So, today we are going to be looking uh, closely at the RWG Mixer.xml file, which controls the random world generation. And we'll look at a little bit at the Biomes XML file as well as a complementary piece. So first off, so you say you like big towns. You like big towns, you say. Well, how's this for a town? One, block, one big block, two big blocks, three big blocks, four big blocks, five big blocks, six big blocks that way, and that's the narrow side. Take a look at this. How's that for looting? You could loot that sucker for days. So this is a double size uh, wasteland hub. And yeah, you could pretty much just stay in this town and never, ever go anywhere else. And you would be perfectly fine. Uh, it's got desert on one side, it's got pine forest on one side, it's just a massive town. So, uh, we're going to be looking, oh, it's even got snow on one side. Nice. It's got everything. It's wonderful. It makes me weep. And look at this freaking cliffside that gets carved out. So basically there's a padding around the city that still is, so this area here is still quote unquote wasteland biome um, so you get the same kind of spawning as you would get in the hub itself so it, it gives you a little bit of a space around it and then wow yeah look at that cliff that's some serious cliff baby got cliff all right so what are we doing and where are we doing it okay let's uh let's go ahead and exit out here remember remind me not to spawn in the world <laughs> all right so the RWG Mixer.xml file. So this again is located in your data, your seven days to die, your C maps, common seven days to die data config directory. And it's RWG Mixer.xml. So we're gonna go through this really quickly, kind of explain what it's doing. So at the very top, vanilla rule set. So that you can actually define new rule sets, which is kind of cool. And I'm not sure if it would this way you can kind of play with your stuff. So, um, what I've done in this case is I increased high density to a one probability and low density to 0 0.05. So, most of the time, it's going to give you a high density hub. So, what we'll explain those cell rules in a second. So, you can have multiple cell rules in here um, and then have a probability of them being generated. And this confuses me slightly because there were some low density. I actually know it was probably a high density as well. So basically it's always going to be high density uh, in generation. Um, and we go to here, we ignore, let's ignore their, uh, the custom hub test, which is the pimps uh, uh, hub test in there. So he, these are the cell rules. So a cell is a region of the world to be generated. So they've got low density, high density and wasteland hub rules set up. So in here, you see this number, pop, pop. If you would like to have a greater chance of having caves in your biomes, do that. Because every low density biome that comes along, and just to show you, uh, let's open up the base. Oops, the base one. By default, low density is the given choice, high density 0 0.05. So most of the time, you're gonna get low density and not high density, like this. So I would suggest that you change it to something like this. You'll get more high density, uh, more cities as well as towns. But perhaps we can do it this way and give ourselves a little bit of variety of world. 
we are going to do a couple of loads of different mixes so we can see up what the what these things look like. Pardon me, I got a little bit of stuffed upness today. So the cells themselves. Let's look at these again. So we have cave counts. Let's get ourselves some happy, dappy caves in the low density areas. Um, let's also go in here and say we want gravel roads in all of the low density areas. Path radius, so this is how wide the roads are going to be. If you want narrower roads, you can go seven or five. You want to do odd numbers. Okay, and then the rules for the hub in that cell. So think of the cell as a region. Um, I'm holding my hands up to describe it. Just as a, as a zone in the map that's being generated. And in that zone, there's a chance of getting a small city, a, a rural small, or a town small. There's also a town large that's defined. And you can define your own hub rules as well. So there's a 0.1% chance uh, or 10 percent chance of a small small city a 50 percent chance well again it doesn't actually add up i really wish they would make it so it added up to 100 percent um, and then town small so you could adjust these as well so you could indicate you want more cities uh more small towns and more just rural so rural is gonna be like that just a one two store kind of layouts so let's look at uh, high density so high density has got an 80 percent chance of a small city 50% chance of a small town, and then 50% chance of small. So it's going to pick this one. It's going to roll a dice. 80% or less, pick it. Yes. If it doesn't get that, then let's go here. It's going to go, okay, 50% chance of less or no. Doesn't, then it drops the next one. So it's going to check each one before it fails the next. Uh, otherwise, it'll default um, to, I guess, wilderness default. So. Uh, so we've got high density. So our waistline hub, which is defined... No caves in this hub city. Asphalt hub rule city small. So it's still using the city small hub rule. There's no city large hub rule defined. But you could define your own hub rule. So now we get to the hub rules section. So here we go. Uh, you just give it a type. And then you get your width and your height. So width and height uh, is the uh, X, you know, north, south, east, west extent of the city and uh block basically is 96 units in this case uh by default this was uh 206 414 206 414 that's what made uh when i doubled that is when i got that really nice large hub city so if you wanted to go have a, a wider variety you maybe go from small to large and then you would get uh, a really big town extent so uh let's look at so we got a large town and a small town and a rural town so up here in our so they did not add a chance in the high density of a town large it uses the same basic rules it's just bigger it's just not actually not that much bigger max is 200 max is 250 so it's not like a big difference but you could go with a bigger number here so let's go with um let's go with the same values as the small city for the town large okay and then let's go up here into our high density and we're going to add a town large cell option and we're going to give this a an 80 percent chance as well so highest chance is towns so towns are again we'll show these pre show this lamp in a second here towns aren't going to give us that many uh, of the of the box stores. All right, so then, so these are in, h towns or rurals. So hub rule none. So there's just nothing, and there's a little test here that they have it. So here's the wilderness rules. Wilderness rule default is the one thing, and then they've got 
path-type gravel. So this is those little forks that come off the roads. Wide is too wide. Maybe you want those paths a little wider. Maybe you want all those little gravel paths four blocks wide. Or eight blocks wide, actually. You can remember, radius. Double it. Uh, they're gravel. Prefab rule, wilderness POIs. Probability one. So everyone's going to give you a POI. Cool, 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 cool. All right, now we get down to our prefab rules. <coughs> so this is going to go with town large, wasteland hub, wilderness POIs, etc. So in here is where the stores that are going to be spawned are defined, and they're kind of classes of things. All right, I hope that's better. Okay, um, so uh, in here, you've got city blocks. City buildings, common, silly, bu yeah, city buildings, uncommon, and silly buildings, yeah, rare, common, and then a probability for each one. So this is kind of a class of rules for what buildings would be built in the wasteland hub. Same goes with these. And these, so these are basically contain, you know, basically loot lists for that prefab area. So again, we pass up. We're basically passing down a whole bunch of data. So we got town large. So town large is defined there, which is called in here. So you can see how it kind of cascades down. So when it calls that town large, it's going to call this, which is going to generate these blocks here. Okay, when it's building a building. Um, Town small just uses town buildings. And wilderness POI, this is your list of POIs. So awesome, right? Okay, now we get down here a little farther. City buildings common. So this is where we're looking rubber rubble buildings white, red, tan, gray, waste. Parking lots, apartments, government offices, entertainment, gas stations. So this is kind of similar to the uh, loot list. If you remember what the loot list looks like, you've got a uh, container specifying specific things, or you've got groups. Yeah. You get groups containing specific items. So back over here, same thing. So the maximum number of parking garages you can get is four, maximum number of government offices you can get is two, and this. Uh, maximum entertainment is one. So I guess you only get one movie theater, maybe. Yeah. Depends on what you have in that block, I guess. Uh, and then building, rare buildings. So this is where it defines what it thinks the maximum count of any particular stores are. So you, if you want to get more stores, you could change these numbers. Maybe up it to two. We get two of each kind of building. Um... And I want to show town buildings is that bomb shelter. That bomb shelter is in there. So you can see that it does generate in town buildings. So country housing, here's the prefabs that can be in country housing. There's a church graveyard, house ranch white, house ranch tan, house ranch tan two, ranch blue, burnt housing, lower class housing, middle class housing. So these are the actual prefabs that are being uh, that could be spawned in this class of object. And it just goes on and on like that. Okay. So. Yes. There's a gas station, different gas stations, different factories, different rural things, barns and sheds. These are all the bombs. And, oh, and see the barns and sheds can get you a bomb shelter. So if you want to look for barns and sheds. So barns and sheds spawn in wilderness so in the wilderness you w you can get that bomb shelter um can all the campsites all the cabins um water pois so there's a the pond military camps wilderness miscellaneous ranger station screw you all right so that all defines all the prefab rules. So all those things control what prefabs apply. So if you were to go in and add new prefabs to your world from, from, from a prefab pack, you could go in your RWG mixer file and add them in where you want them to spawn in. Um, I don't actually have an example of that, or do I have an example of some... Do I have some... 
yes, I have some custom multi, some uh, custom prefabs in here. Um, these have not been updated to uh, anything new, any, uh, updated Alpha 12 yet. Um, I have not done that. But there are Alpha 12 prefab packs available. You could download them, and then you would add them into your biomes or this RWG mixer file to indicate where they would be spawned in. Um, it'd be a little bit of work, and I bet somebody actually has a, a full version of this RWG mixer um, with those map, uh, with those cities built right in, or those uh, other prefabs built right in. All right, let's go back, er, back here to big. Okay, and then let's go down here to the very end of this. So this is the biome spawn rules. This controls how the biomes actually spawn. And the way they've done it is actually kind of slick. It's all just based on elevation. So the random world generator kind of slowly ups and downs and makes uh, elevation changes depending upon the uh, class defined in here, which relates back to the biomes XML file and matches up to here okay so when you for instance here in biome spawn rule desert is everywhere from zero blocks and zero is actually 50, 62 i think is where zero is as far as spawning goes um so everything from you know, from from the ground, from ground. Let's just, let's call it sea level. Okay, let's call six, uh, zero to be sea level, um, which would be actually sixty two blocks of stuff below that down to bedrock. But at that level, everything from there to twenty is desert. Everything from twenty up is plains. From fifty up is forest. Eighty to one hundred and ten is pine forest. 110 to 255 is snow. Now, it is not a hard and fast thing. So what will happen is, let's say it's it's generating the biome, and it's that biome is going to have some height variability that is based off of the terrain class. Okay? So that's, this terrain class defines how mountainous, literally, in this case, that that region is so in this case the terrain class is forest so maybe the forest isn't doesn't have as many you know hills and valleys and things um the pine forest uses mountains as well um desert you know or the plains biome uses desert as a uh, how, how elevation changes the desert uses desert obviously so these control the the height variability within that biome but it's not going to instantly change to another biome um, automatically um, there's 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 some like feathering going on so don't expect um, you know just because a block goes to 21 it's not instantly going to turn to a biome um, I think at that point basically there's a, there's a probability that hits and determines okay is there is there enough is there a certain minimum size available um, in in that altitude to let me generate a plains biome? Um, that's why you'll get little peaks of plains biome in the desert when the ground hits a certain uh, elevation for a while. That makes sense. So if, for example, you wanted it to be snowy down at ground level and high desert you could do that you could just swap these two around or if you wanted everything above 110 to be burnt forest shit you can do that you can do it pretty much anything you want to with these elevation changes or you could tighten it up and say i want um the plains to be really a large chunk of the world you could just get rid of plains or you could move planes up and get rid of snow. Um, you could get rid of the... So basically the forest maples up are lower than pine forests up higher. Maybe you don't want the snow. Maybe you don't want any snow at all in your world. You could get, get rid of that and have this go to 55 instead. So there's a lot of variability that you could, you could change here to make your world 
different if you wanted different kinds of things especially if you went into your rwg mixer file or no it's right into your biomes file and you change this terrain class mountains maybe on the forests and changed it to desert so you had um you know cliff faces and stuff but not as much uh, uh elevation change you, know, you could do that and then maybe you would ever get that really high peaks or whatever in your world so I I hope I've explained that okay. Um, these are going to be implemented later on. I'm guessing as a, all these other pieces, especially the radiated stuff. Um, but I've gone with a burnt fo- burnt forest uh, sub biome that I added into my. Let's see where where I put it here. Do 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 do. Boop 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 boop. Sure. Yeah, burnt sub biome. I added into plains, forest, and maple for, uh, pine forest, so that I could have a little bit of burnt area, just kind of you know out there in the world, which is kind of cool. All right, let's just as one last experiment before we load up a new world here. Let's go ahead and I want to get rid of the pine forest in my in this in this example. I'm just going to comment this out for right now, uh, in case you don't know. Uh, that is a open comment. That's a closed comment um, in HTML and and uh, other stuff. So and I apologize for the vacuum noise in the background. Let me see if I can pause for a moment. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and take this and go to 80. So basically, we're going to have a lot more snow, snow in our world. Snow. We're going to have bigger. Uh, we're going to have bigger stuff. Uh, I'm going to have add this bomb shelter into um, where should we add it to make it more common um, we'll add it into the country housing and we'll add it into city buildings common okay so now just a bunch more stuff. So we've we've changed the number of caves. We've changed the size of towns. We've added a town large, or actually implemented the town large um, into this high density. We made high density more common, uh, but still not all the time. So we're still going to get a good mix. City small. Let's look at city small. Let's add that into city small. So that uses. Um, so let's go to town small. Um, town large, town small, wilderness POIs. And prefab rule, town small. There we go, town buildings. So town buildings, I want to make sure that that is in there. It is, okay. All right, so there's all our changes. Uh, give me a few minutes here. I'm going to start up a new world, and then we can explore a little bit. Okay, so here we are in the world, and right off the bat, um, caves, <laughs> cave, 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 and look how wide the ro- the uh, gravel paths are. So those gravel paths are much wider now, kind of ridiculously wide. All right, so I'm gonna pop around. Okay, we got more. Yeah, wow. The the, the uh, wide roads are make it really obvious, don't it? Doesn't it? That makes it super obvious. All right, so let's go ahead and pop around a tiny little bit here. It's actually kind of hard to tell the difference between a. Uh, uh, oh, see, boom, right there. So we go from maple. Screw you, bear. Yeah, sit down, boo-boo. Uh, so we go from maple forest right into pines and and snow. So you see that we basically have, have skipped out on the pines biome. Which I kind of like. I actually kind of like that. This goes right into it. Um, okay, let's do some more... Okay. Slightly odd uh, thing there. Now, I do expect when you start dinking with uh, these files, 
that you're going to get some odd generation to the world. Because remember, they've tuned uh, the values to make the world look reasonably good um, at the at the existing settings. So when you start really jerking them around a little bit, you are going to get some results that are just, they don't work well. Because obviously, like I said, the pimps have dialed it in to the point where they could get um, a decent looking uh, biome generation all the time. Oh, I also noticed that this road... Yep, it's still asphalt. Okay, good. Run, 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 up. See Daisy. Okay, let's go back here and start teleporting some more. I want to get to some towns. You're probably going to end up with a lot more snow in this one because remember that snow goes from a low elevation to a very high elevation. So you're going to get a lot more snow with the current setup we've got set going, set up and going here. So this can take us a little bit here to get ourselves to a town. Oops, that just kind of ended, didn't it? All right, let me pause until I find a town. Oh, I remember that we actually changed the road type in the uh, wilderness to this gravel. So that's why we're getting gravel everywhere, even with the little gravel roads off of it. Oh, we got a snow cave, a, little, a couple of cluster of small snow caves here, which is kind of cool. I haven't come across a, a snow cave in a while. There's those little, little oh, nice trees nestled down in there. Uh, I found one small uh, rural town so far. Um, just not finding a lot of the big towns. It is kind of a slow process. It is kind of click teleport everywhere. And ah, oh, just a. Uh, this is a rural town. Uh, yeah, the rural POI. Since we're still gravel roaded, all right. I'll keep. I'll keep clicking. And I wanted to point out as well. So you see, we remember we set the low density to a seventy percent chance, and so basically, it checks that seventy percent chance or less. Then it does low density, thirty percent chance or high. It does high density, and the low density is gravel roads and lots of caves. So as you can see, we're getting a lot of the. Um, yeah, you can look at all the gravel roads. So low density is definitely spawning pretty high. And we're also getting a large number of caves. Um, as you can see, I've got more caves here. So we've definitely increased the, the spawn chance of caves significantly. And um, you can see all, each, each of those kind of big biome areas is, is pretty much sticking in the low density, a like very high chance. Ooh, what do we got here? Let's take a look. Whoa! Hello there. So there's a town. Let's see. Is this a wasteland hub? No, it's not a... Well, it's a hub, but... Okay, so we've got one Shamway, a Border Noble, uh, a second Shamway. Okay. So there's two Shamways right next to each other. So there's that rule we fixed, we made it so that there's more Shamways. Up to two Shamway, or up to two of each kind of store in a city, which normally you don't get. So if you want more Shaka Messiahs or whatever, you can increase those odds and get a few more of those Shaka Messiahs in your hubs. So this is a pretty good sized, yeah, this is pretty decent. Decent. Not wonderful, but decent. Um, yeah, no, I take it back. That's a good sized town. That's a really good sized city. So we definitely have big cities spawning. Um, but I'm still looking for a nice uh, town to show you guys. So I'll try to wrap up with that. All right. Well, I may have borked something in the file when I was copy pasting. Um, because as you can tell, um, I've come across a town. And all it has is... Uh, Little sheds. So I'm thinking that when I paste it in, so in my um, small town prefab rules, I wonder if that um, 
uh, where did I do it? The bomb shelter. I wonder if that caused um, an issue somewhere. However, it definitely is. Um, let's get rid of that as well. It definitely is spawning things in. So I want to explain one last time before we go. So if we look back at our map, we've got a town, we've got the hub city here, and this is in a low density zone. You can tell it's low density because the roads are gravel. So if we look back at our XML file one last time, we've got low density, same percent chance, high density, 30% chance. So low density generates gravel roads, lots of caves, 10% chance of a small city. So it does have a small chance of generating a city and then a rural area or a town, small town instead. Um, the high density gets you a chance of a large town as well, which we did define in our XML file. Um, so I hope that explains things a little bit. Uh, we, you know, we played with elevation changes down here, got rid of our pine forest. Uh, we increased the size of the towns, we increased the number of caves, we changed the spawning ratios for uh, bookstores. Um, uh, you, could add, you could increase the gun store probability to one, you could do, do all that good stuff. So, I hope that helps you guys mix up your worlds a little bit. Uh, remember, it goes hand in hand with the biomes XML, which we've kind of talked about before. Uh, and again, this defines your terrain types, um, and then what's actually in that biome, weather and stuff like that, the clouds, which I've explained before. Um, and then this defines where those get generated, and the cells then define what's in those areas. And as you can see, you can get some interesting world results good bad indifferent they're just interesting so for now it's been wrong with the bold if you guys have questions please leave them in the comments below i'll do my best to answer them to the best of my ability um oh booksy cave whoa not cave floating campsite this seems to happen a lot i think there's a there might be an issue um with that one particular prefab because I've seen this campground in midair a few times. Oh, timber. That's cool. All right. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.